Right. So the topic is developing impactful MOOC learning experience. Uh, I put impactful in the code so that maybe a disclaimer, or maybe you can define how uh, impactful is impactful. So I leave it open for us to discuss today. Right. Uh, as you know that comparing face-to-face -face interaction and MOOC interaction supposed to be the same in terms of interaction as human being, except that we are in front of the camera like we're doing like now. Okay, I'm doing like this in front of my students in my class, and now I'm doing the same thing in front of you, except that our, uh, our border or our, our obstacle is the computer screen. Okay. Uh, this is my personal homepage. It's on uh, visualcv.com. Shahrul Nizam Junaini. Yeah. You might want to spend any time visiting my personal homepage. I need to promote my personal homepage since uh, I, I bought it. <laughs> I'm paying the service for from visualcv.com. It's a bit expensive, so no mind. But you may hear that this is my photo with uh, the previous uh, higher education minister, Dr. Sri Idris Jusso, during the uh, National Academy Award. Yeah, but uh, no worries, this uh, event is not about me, it's about my MOOC and your MOOC and your future MOOC, right? Let's take a look at the trends. So I would prefer starting our discussion with uh, by giving a scenario, the trends of uh, MOOC on Google search. So for the last five years, you may see the graph uh, up and down, up and down. But suddenly, the peak was during 22nd to 28th of March 2020. And uh, I am pretty sure that you can guess what happened during that uh, period. Right. Thank you, Dr. <laughs> Visa. It's uh, MCO and what PKP, NBM, MCO, and what happened? The popularity has has uh, become, uh, has, uh, the peak was, I think, this highest for the last five years, of course. Yeah, this is MCO uh, during the pandemic of COVID 19. Okay, so this is our MCO phase one, 18 to 31st of March, 2020. Uh, right, so maybe someone says that uh, MOOC is not popular anymore uh, by seeing, by looking at the graph, the, the trends, but uh, I'm not sure whether it's good or not. During the pandemic, MOOC has, has boomed, the popularity has increased. Everyone has turned to online learning, including our our classroom in Unimas, at Unimas, right? Yeah, it's uh, during 18 to 10, 31st of March this year. This is the uh, my plan for today. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to bring you to explore my MOOC, Multimedia Technology and Design MOOC. That's the title of the MOOC. Okay. And after that, uh, I'll bring you to explore Digital Garage from Google, what is inside Digital Garage and how we could learn from them how they create the learning activities. Number three, one of my favorite MOOC on future learn platform is from the UK. The videos are perfect. It looks like BBC public, uh, BBC broadcasting quality. I love it. Then I will share some interactive tools that you may embed or you may bring in your MOOC or you may do it manually, printed version whatsoever, as long as it's interactive. That's the keyword, interactive learning but for our topic today is on MOOC, okay, and conclusion of the session. Uh, maybe not up to two hours because I'm going to give you some maybe chance for you to explore your own. Uh, you should take this opportunity to enroll and play around, give it a, give it a try and have a taste of what would be uh, award-winning MOOC I'm going to share you today, right? So, for well, today, if you have been uh, familiar, maybe not you, uh, your kids, for Dora, <laughs> Dora TV program on on the on TV because it's on TV. So every time Dora asks uh, a question, she would wait for maybe like ten seconds, waiting for an answer. And then, then, who answers the question? It's herself. So that happened on passive video viewing. Of course, this is one better way rather than a continuous a straight one hour, uh, I mean, maybe 10 minutes of Dora uh, episode. But for this session, it's very important for you to chat with me. Okay. Thank you, Dayang Nulisa, coronavirus. 
uh, keep chatting, keep asking. You may interrupt me anytime. Yeah. So that uh, <laughs> you would answer my question. So we have interactive online participation. I would expect it from you. Thank you very much. Okay. So, so the first session for the brainstorming, maybe I would like to invite you to log on to wooclap.com slash MOOC Unimas Capital. It's on wooclp.com. Yeah, I start with very uh, simple question. What do you think is the biggest challenge in online learning? And then we uh, link it to MOOC. Of course, uh, MOOC is one type of online uh, interaction. All right. I would expect you to join me. Just throw your ideas. Start with a brainstorming. Biggest challenge, maybe not the biggest ones. OK, using new apps, thank you very much. For the first uh, entry, that's the challenge. Of course, it's new. It's not easy to learn new thing. Students' participation, that's our issue for today. Getting activities, engagement, participation. Of course, newbie for us. Uh, first time maybe uh, using MOOC or developing MOOC. We may try to enter maybe more than one uh, entry, more than one. Uh, Suggestion. Keep tracking of students' progress. Internet connection on one of the biggest issues nowadays. Uh, after the viral issue of student at uh, UMS. And maybe one more uh, stories from Sarawak. I'm not sure. Maybe Pakan or Sariki somewhere. Internet connection. Junior, you must let you know, must lecturer. Uh, of course, I was like you uh, 20 years ago. Slow line. Uh, some of these factors we may or we could control, the less we can. Medium of connection, bubble lecture. Right, so you may want to use uh, wooclap.com as well during your online lecture for this semester. Or you may link it to MOOC as well. Link the URL as simple as that. Or you may embed it. Yeah, I'm still waiting. Learning track, misinterpretation. Miscommunication. If you see your answers, uh, it it also applies for face-to-face -face interaction as well. Uh, misinterpretation. You need to re-explain, uh, brief the student after you brief it, give the activity and debrief the activity. Uh, same as uh, online, uh, but maybe different uh, approach, different way. Perfectionist. Uh, thank you. Someone is a perfectionist here. He or she. <laughs> Once a perfect, maybe MOOC video, perfect uh, teaching quality, that's great. Uh, but for me at the moment, maybe not perfect, but as long as it's complete, uh, you complete the number of videos, you complete the interaction activities, that's it. Your MOOC project is done. Uh, then you improve it from time to time. What else? Uh, engagement, using new apps, face to face, connect uh, interaction, response, waiting for response. All right, for MOOC, uh, for MOOC is different uh, case because, uh, of course, we make it compulsory on ELIP. On MOOC, the participation is maybe once they come up with the activity and that's it, or you may mark them or make it, uh, uh, you don't have to give marks for the activity. Uh, then as a result, the student won't do it. That's, that's normal, uh, <laughs> carrot and stick approach. But for more, maybe you, uh, I'm going to share you maybe different approach to make your session more interactive, uh, more active, and more uh, fruitful for the student. All right. So these are the explanation. Uh, more than face to face, got to prepare video, have better instructional plans. Yes. Uh, better instructional plans. It seems that you already uh, see my slide. <laughs> In my slide, there's a keyword on instructional plan planning. Unpredictable lack of response. Okay. Internet connection, discrimination, means deprivation. Bubble lecture, myself. Yourself is the biggest challenge. Uh, we learn together to improve ourselves. What else? Uh, learning progress for ELIP, no worries. You can track it. Even for MOOC, you can track the activities. Okay. For the student activities, you may, you may keep track on what happened. Or 
uh, we'll explore it together. I'll show you um, hands on after this. You may try to uh, enroll my class, then you see what what would happen, and you have a good feeling of it. Right. Thank you for those participating on uh, WooClap. What else? Uh, student engagement with student. Okay. Thank you for your participation. We may discuss it later on. Okay. Okay. So let's explore my MOOC, Multimedia Technology and Design MOOC. This is the homepage. At the moment, uh, the community has reached 4,600 students. This is basic uh, homepage of our video, official homepage from uh, Open Learning. After this, you just log on to Unimas MOOC. Uh, then find multimedia technology and design, then click join now. I would love you to join me so that you can see uh, what I did for the last five years. Uh, I have 57 short videos. The keyword is short, make it short and sweet. For YouTube, uh, short videos is four minutes and less. But for me, I would prefer maybe three minutes. That's it, short videos and make it, make lots of videos, no worries but short ones, considering the cognitive load, the ability for your student to focus, that's not easy. Even we ourselves, four hours of video, could you imagine the, the total duration, four hours of video, okay. Thank you, Dr. Terry, for giving the link. That link would be, bring you direct to my MOOC. Okay. So now I give it a freedom for you while you listening for me. You may explore my MOOC as well. Click enroll now. This is what I did in my classroom. I explain, then I give my student chance to uh, ha have a hands-on activity, hands-on uh, experience. One hundred and twenty pages of activity uh, for one semester for fourteen weeks. So my student may they may decide to do it one go, maybe one week or one day if they manage to do it, or they do it weekly. This is some uh, statistic on their enrollment and semesters now, five years since 2015. Enrollment 4615, international students, more than 10% from, uh, from the rest of the world. I don't, I don't have the complete data for, of their country, background of, of their countries of origin. Completion rate, more than 55%. And we may, uh, you may argue about the completion rate it's uh, different compared to uh, watching movies. For example, if you watch a movie uh, at the cinema, you pay 15, 20 ringgits, and suddenly uh, you drop out or you leave the cinema during the half half an hour of the of the movie, that would become, you feel that the, you know, it's, it's not uh, worth it for you. So you need to complete the movie. But for MOOC, as long as you learn, as long as you get what you learn, what you get, what you need from the, from the content, that's it. You just leave my my MOOC. Don't worry. It's different, uh, different uh, business. Uh, business what you call it? What you call it? Business uh, perspective, business approach. Okay. Uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, it was awarded as a big, as a best MOOC award during IUSL 2017 uh, in Malaysia, Malaysian level. And during IUSL last year, the same MOOC. Uh, Send it to uh, you sell 2019, I received silver medal. And from the same uh, project, I published one conference paper and one uh, book chapter. So no worries. Now you have, uh, if you think that this is about teaching and learning, no connection with uh, research and publication, you may think twice. You may uh, report the data from your MOOC and at least you have to to uh, Google Scholar papers here, okay, Google Scholar's article. Maybe not Scopus yet. All right, for the instructional challenges, of course, the same long, uh, the same history, learning outcomes. With uh, once they complete your MOOC, what is the impact on their knowledge, on their on themselves, whether the skills are improved or better? Then to make sure that the learning has impact, we need assessment. So on MOOC, we have simple quizzes. Of course, it's uh, not the formal assessment, but you still can uh, record what your student, uh, what uh, what is the uh, level of understanding, for example, how they 
uh, participate, how they perform their performance in your MOOC. Of course, the learning activities, these are conditions for learning to happen. Traditional uh, issues, learning outcomes, learning assessment, learning activities. You need to make sure that these three things are uh, aligned. This is called constructive alignment. And you may try to embed three C's in MOOC activity, collaboration, collaborative uh, learning. Maybe for one task, uh, they can share. F find your partner or two, two of you to come up with one task. Or you may ask them to work in group, assign them in groups. Okay. Creativity, go for creative, not creative design, like Video is one of, I think it's not easy. It's a challenging way. It's a challenging task to, to create one nice and creative video. Communication skills, ask them to write a small, simple report. Uh, video is also one way to communicate your ideas, three Cs. You may extend from three Cs to maybe six Cs, up to you. Uh, citizenship, uh, now we are talking about digital citizenship. What else? Uh, creativity, communication. Uh, you may find or define any other Cs as long as related to improving the process of learning. Never mind the thing. Okay, see, critical thinking. Uh, in your discussion, uh, ask your student to think critically or critic, critic a passage, critic a video, for example, and come up with solution. Thanks, Teddy. Anyone else? Okay, uh, so my students say it's enjoyable. It's an enjoyable experience for them. Uh, solving problem, as mentioned by Dr. Terry, project-based learning that solves the problem of learning. Impressive. Uh, a lot of new tasks for me, never experienced before. Of course, they have never uh, they never took my subject because that's why they never experienced the, the, the task. Okay. This student has a more radical suggestion. I suggest that students only attend the class once a month. This was three, four years ago, and that exam. Uh, since Unima spoke has been fully utilized by the lecturer. This suggestion from my student was three, four years ago. But what happened, we do it now uh, during the pandemic, after the post pandemic. Okay. All right. What sets uh, my MOOC apart from other is hands on activity. I think you did the same thing in your classroom. Now bring it to MOOC. Simple. Real world activity, go for real world. For example, uh, designing a poster for real event rather than for just for the sake of uh, uh, MOOC activity. Of course, it must fit the same, the, the event itself, in terms of the timing, in terms of the submission dates. If there is any a competition out there, you know that competition, for example, I think lots of competitions. You would receive uh, lots of email, like video competition, poster design competition, link it. If it suits your topic, why not give it a try? Ask a student to submit it, design the poster, submit it on MOOC platform. Uh, fast and fun activity, fast, for me, maybe half an hour to complete one poster. There's lots of uh, rapid design tools, for example, canva.com. In five, 10 minutes, you can come up with a poster. Fun activity, make it, maybe you can link it with, to, with uh, gamification, uh, link it with giving badge, giving uh, extra points, extra candies, for example, for those who uh, submitted the earliest. I did this last week during my uh, lecture. Simple activity, creating uh, uh, instructional video, not instructional, uh, video about COVID-19, importance of social distancing, etc. Simple uh, activity, and they, they feel very happy to, to come up with that uh, uh, poster, uh, sorry, video. All right, for this is the, the list of activities on my my MOOC on a simple activity but you can see later on how I make it different from the normal way of introducing the students Define it, defining multimedia definition give definition uh, then the multimedia designs about font the font that I love same boring activity you may call it boring activity in the classroom but I just make the name nicer the fonts that I love as the student to uh, download the phone, use it, upload it. Number four, digital curation. Curation, process of collecting, keeping something. Now, digital curation, I ask my student to curate digital artifacts, digital 
content as simple as snapping a photo upload it to MOOC and discuss about the content mind mapping uh, of course i'm sure that you have done it lots in your classroom and now bring the mind mapping using online tools bring it it bring it on MOOC find and share ask them to find certain new knowledge new videos from youtube share the link on youtube uh, on MOOC sorry real world activity as i mentioned just now any real world activity related to real world event for example during the pandemic covid ask them to link covid with maybe if you're from faculty of economics and business maybe what what is the impact of covid to the business activity for example quick design five minutes upload it okay. for review question of course uh, for review question forum uh, not only ask them to review the content of the slides or content of the notes but ask them to review the yes thank you Shazrina, learning style uh, to review the content of the video you have you upload the video of course on youtube it will be video ask them to review uh, the content not just as simple as summarizing the content but maybe uh, critique ask them to critique ask them to uh, give the six tips you have five tips on the video ask them to give the sixth one find similarities maybe ask them to uh, find the similarities between your video and maybe lots of other videos on youtube uh, differences create venn diagram to visualize the similarities or differences for example lots of ideas i leave it to you i just throw the idea the concept throw away the idea and you can think of what is your okay thank you focus time span uh for face-to-face -face interaction normally i speak for five minutes but here for screen interaction i've been speaking for more than five minutes i think 10, 15 minutes, and when I'll stop after this, and I'll give you a chance to explore hands-on. Okay, uh, video watching is a passive activity, like we watch movies at the cinema, but you may cut the video, the last one minute, and predict the, ask them to predict the ending. What happened with, what is the, the impact of the, for example, global warming video? Uh, of course, you need to edit the video first, cut it, and leave the last one minute, hide it. After the, the predicting, maybe the next week, the next session, uh, you reveal what happened, what is the ending of the video. Okay, one idea. Or, I know that you are busy uh, developing your own video for your work. Now, why not ask your student to create a video rather than giving a re written report or demo? This is for them to demonstrate learning. Any type of videos as simple as Powtoon, or now you, they may use Canva, Canva video to create nice, stunning video, short videos. Okay. And it's been proven by research. Student-generated video offers uh, good digital communication skills. This is what the companies want. The 21st century learning style. While they create the video, they enjoy the process of shooting, finding the, the content, finding the, the information. And since this is about come up with the best video, uh, it, they would feel motivated and satisfying for them. Okay. All right, so now maybe I'll give you 10 minutes to enroll and fill my course before we move to the second session. Okay. Where's the link, Dr. Terry? It's on chat box. Uh, Okay, this is the link that Teddy has shared it. I'm copying it again and sharing it here. Okay, just click it or copy it and paste it on your browser. Okay, uh, see you again at 10.40 p.m., not p.m., 10.40 a.m. Maybe five minutes for you to first enroll. Don't go away because I can check. So, your presence here yeah i can see now you are my student thank you very much for becoming my student all right enjoy the session please you may click on any menus especially learning activities that's our topic for today and meanwhile you may ask you may uh, ask anything about my MOOC. I can sort 
by enrollment date. I'm sure that you have a MOOC account since you are the developers. Two minutes ago, Namun CC is Kovia. Okay, roll. Oh, sorry. Okay, the one we have uh, one. Well, I have one new student this morning. Okay, number two uh, is uh, Digital Garage. This is uh, from Google. Let's take a look. Uh, never mind, my, my intention today is to give you an example of learning activities on Google Digital Garage. You may explore is later. Uh, online courses are offered here. on Google Digital Garage, on data and technology, digital marketing, career development. Yeah. If you're interested, you may see, uh, maybe not to learn the new content, but just to see how they uh, create the learning content, learning activities. Let's take a look, it's free. For example, today I want to learn about uh, machine learning. I'm from Faculty of Computer Science and Information Technology. Still, I want to learn about machine learning basic. Almost similar with our MOOC learning content. Click start learning. And same approach, uh, watching the videos. Then, for example, if it's not clear, the voice is not clear, there's a transcript included. So in my case, for my MOOC, I have videos, but I also upload the transcript in PDF. So the students may, if they may, if they prefer reading, they may print it, uh, read it from their mobile phones, for example. Uh, this is the transcript. The same thing that I I spoke that I said in the video. They may compile it. They may put it in a file, read it during maybe waiting for the bus, waiting for the flight, or they may listen and uh, read the transcript while listening to the video. It's up to the student. My focus now, let's see, check your knowledge, how they uh, play around, how they create the question. Harry is a, is new to machine learning and wants a quick overview. See, it's a boring theory about machine learning, but the way they created the question using maybe a situation, maybe a, a scenario, just put, put it Harry. Kalau uh, di Malaysia guna nama, uh, Ali, Abu, for example, this is Harry. True and false, true or false question, simple. I know you did this uh, many times before. Okay, yes or no. But it's a serial, four questions. I just click it okay, and click submit. Uh, see the tone, how they interact with the student. Not just yes, good, bad, but you are nearly right. Have another go. That not that not that's not quite right. Okay. Instead, explain the question. This is how to interact with uh, offline learners. Uh, I say, I mean online learners that you can't see in front of your eyes. You may try again. Watch the video again. This is from Digital Garage. Okay. You may want to explore it's yourself later on. Digital Garage courses. <clears throat> And great uh, providers, Coursera here, FutureLearn as well, Monash University, what else? Uh, Open University, Udacity. I love this type of uh, bite sized learning, simple, short video, effective networking. Right. Okay, that's uh, Digital Garage. Next is uh, FutureLearn. 
Let's explore future learn. See, uh, MOOC is about not about learning boring courses, traditional courses. I've enrolled to one course is English football, a social history. Let's take a look on future learn. <coughs> I love the collaboration between these two universities, UC of Leicester, uh, Dean Mukherjee, UC of Leicester, with Leicester City Football Club. Could you imagine how they collaborate <clears throat> and come up, coming up with a great move? Okay. Overview topic, okay. normal way of uh, having more videos, but let's focus on the activity. Welcoming the student. Okay, discussion question. Football and you. Uh, of course, if you're not interested in playing football, never mind. I've not been playing for football for the last three, four months during the, the pandemic. Okay, before we begin with the course proper, would like to find out about your own experience of football. So now to bring this into your own subject context. Uh, just copy and paste. Of course, it's plagiarism, but you take the the general keyword before we begin with uh, programming course, for example, chemical engineering course. I would like to find out what your own experience experience in doing some chemical experiment during SPM, for example. Uh, regardless of whether you are a long term fan, casual fan, players, or if you're interested in the history of the game. Simple. Uh, brainstorming or ice breaking questions. What's your first taste of football? Have you played? Just to break the ice for the first question, for the first discussion, right? And answer is here on the discussion box. It is, is my profile on London. Of course, it's free, but uh, you need to pay for the certificate. And of course, once you get the certificate, uh, of course, you're not going to play with play with uh, Leicester City Football Club. At least you have the new knowledge from the about football history. Reading article. <coughs> oh, <coughs> it's since uh, Ming Dynasty in China. New knowledge for me. Football like activity in Ming Dynasty in China. So five zero zero BC. Yeah, I thought it's from England, but it's from China. Right. Okay, so I leave it to you. If I explore more examples about uh, from FutureLearn, just search related courses here and study how they create the activity. Basically, they are using a discussion forum. That's normal. I'm, I've been using a discussion forum many times, but it's a bit boring unless you create a nice tone, uh, interesting discussion topic. It's on futurelearn.com. We'll explore this later. Maybe chemical. I'm not from chemical engineering uh, area, chemical product. Science of light biochemistry. Okay. Next, uh, interactive tools. I'm going to share three. Uh, interactive tools, you may use it. Of course, it's not uh, embedded with MOOC and open learning. You may embed it manually or give the link, bring it to MOOC. Or you may ask a student to use it and upload their product or the output to MOOC. Up to you. It depends on your, like, leave it to your creativity. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Dr. Terry. We have two faculties planning to do more collaboration with industry this year. Uh, we'll have to see it later on. And if the company would like to sponsor MOOC, that would be great. Their brand name would appear on MOOC and we may market their, market their uh, content to the rest of the world. Okay, number one is uh, Google Trends. I think you have been using it before. Number two, talk to books, if you ever heard about it. 
Number three is book widgets. Oops, sorry. Okay, let's see Google Trends. Okay, this is Google Trends. Explore what the world is searching to bring your student to the context of what happened at the moment. For example, COVID-19. It's a search term, just click it. And this is in the US. See, nobody's looking for, yes, maybe very small number since 2019. For the last 12 months, suddenly the peak was, yes, the same as Malaysia, almost the same 15 to the 21st of March. You may see what happened from different countries. This is from the US. Uh, what happened on worldwide search result. You may explore this and bring it to the context of your subject, or you ask your student to explore, give them keyword and report it on more. Five minutes activity. Interest by region related topic uh, topics, related queries, COVID, coronavirus, COVID-19, COVID-19. And here you can see how state, how uh, people are using different uh, keywords to search for the content. And you may compare two search terms, COVID-19, with maybe hotel industry. Okay. And two line graphs will be shown, of course, uh, a bit uh, flat or not, not that popular. At the comparison, okay, more. and you will see what happened in Malaysia. Okay, almost the same trend for the last 12 months. By states, 100% from Penang, Selangor, Sabah, KL. Right, uh, lots of ways. If you want to use Google Trends and link it to your uh, classroom discussion. I'll complete, I'll complete my slide first, then I'll give chance for you to explore and ask me. Number two, talk to books. If it's new, I would like to introduce it to you. It's actually Google Books, but with different interfa interface. Yeah, let's say I would like to search for uh, content of a center with my keyword, for example, active learning. Click go. All right. I love the way the result is shown is uh, being printed ball. In active learning, we consider situations where the learners has some control over the data, for example. Okay. I can just simply use snipping tool and copy it. And bring it to my slides. Okay. As simple as that. Again, for active uh, participation or more, give this link to your student, talk to and ask them to maybe come up, come up related learning. Activation, actively involved in the discussion. Obviously, it was a uh, Google Books. Yeah, it's still there, except this is a bit uh, different in terms of the interface of the output. Okay, number three, bookwidgets.com. You may also embed this tool on your MOOC. Okay, you may start for free, but uh, maybe it's a 30 days trial. I mean, just to explore uh, what's the content of the, uh, the widgets.
Okay. Okay, one minute, Dr. Terry. These are external widgets. It's not on uh, open learning, but I just want to share you, uh, give you some ideas on the types of widgets. Okay. Lots of uh, interesting widgets, for example, uh, flashcard, quizzes, crossword on MOOC, there's also crossword, bingo card, jigsaw puzzle, mind mapping, hangman on MOOC. There's lots of new uh, widgets. I have not explored it before, but normally I, I link external widget to MOOC. Up to you, but better if you focus on uh, open learning platform, uh, try to explore the capabilities on open learning, on our open learning MOOC. It's on bookwidgets.com, you explore later on. Okay, what else? All right, so it seems that we come with the conclusion, and when we go, go back to the hands-on activities later on. Takeaways and tips, design good learning activity. I define good as an interesting topic, very uh, attractive way to deliver the, the process of learning. In the context, context of the students, uh, of course, related to what they're going to see during uh, if once they finish the study. Uh, the content is related to what the industry wants. Then once you have the content, uh, go for a good strategy to upload it to MOOC. Smooth implementation plan and always deliver and improve the activity. For information on my MOOC, I've been uploading and deleting, uploading and deleting the activities. If I see that the activities, for me myself, is not interesting, I just delete it or hide it. And the next semester, I upload it again. And from the way students answered, the, answered my discussion forum, some of them said, okay, only one, one short sentence. I think this is not a nice, topic to be discussed, so I delete it. Next semester, I come up with a better question, for example. Maybe it depends on the, the nature of the subject, uh, depends on the current uh, situation. For example, now, all our assignments are related to uh, COVID or COVID-19 inspired learning activities. It's really, really uh, uh, related to the what, what happened nowadays. Okay. All right, you may contact me. We may think of uh, beyond teaching and learning. This is my profile on, on uh, Publon. My ISI papers on Orchid. My on my on my Google Scholars. It bitly bit dot SNJ is my initial SNJ dot dash Publon dash Orchid dash scholar. Or you may email me. Or maybe. Any joint ventures on any research, teaching, and learning projects, or whatsoever, we may discuss later on. All right, that's for the slides. We have another one hour or so. I've been thinking for, for so long now. Sorry about that. All right, I'm opening this for hands on session. The first session will be for you to explore my multimedia technology and design MOOC. While you click, while you try to answer my question, as if you're a student, my student today, you may ask me directly. After that, you may explore explore the links of they've given here by Dr. Hafiza, uh, the, the one that I've uh, discussed just now. So, okay, uh, I agree, <laughs> student participation. Uh, I'll show you Satu Chuntoni, uh, defining. It's a boring activity, defining terms, it's not, it's not that attractive. Okay, let's see how I word it, I reword it. Simple activity, since they're in the classroom, they bring their own smartphone. Google the word multimedia, based on the name of the course, using Google Images. Okay. This is Google Images, images.google.com. Download one best image that you think best describes multimedia. So maybe the challenge is there. The challenge is to find the best image defining multimedia. Lots of images, but during the process of searching the best, they define the best, that might uh, improve the participation. I'm not sure. While they search for it, they are eager to find more, better, better example, better answer. Okay. 
then upload the image here in the uh, comment box. Based on that image, give your own definition. See, I'm not only asking them to define, but give their own definition. <laughs> and do not forget the URL. See, it's all the answers. Multimedia is a need in this new norm. 19 days ago, as Adelina. This type of definition has never appeared six months ago before COVID-19. So the short definition, uh, five reasons why we should use multimedia for education in Malaysia and simple answer. So that's example, Doctor. And the way how you ask them to define certain uh, uh, in yourself. Okay, thank you. All right, maybe you may start with a less formal activity, for example, uh, ice breaking. Yeah, thank you. Introducing themselves. Okay. Normally, we introduce ourselves uh, using ASL, uh, age, sex, and location. But now, I ask them to make it differently. Introduce yourself briefly, attach a photo of your hometown, uh, landmark, Sandboard should not be obvious. Ask other students from this MOOC uh, course to guess it and take turns to guess others' uh, uh, comments. Request a cup of tetare if you manage to guess the correct answer. Someone suddenly from uh, Uganda here. Yeah. Dulmi Mula, I'm not sure from where. Maybe from Arabic countries, a clue, please, but he didn't respond. So this is the way for you to communicate with the participant. Uh, at least you click like, but better if you could reply. Kiel Shamini, she's from uh, FEB, but I've never been to, the, uh, sorry. The landmark is obvious here, yeah, Dataran Nilai. How about this one? I just give a uh, well guess, Joho. I'm not sure the building. The best part is they started to uh, explore and start to communicate. Sabah, no, maybe Perak Okada. Then the owner of the photo says, Nice try, tapi jauh lagi ni, bro. I leave it to them to use a uh, simple, plain language, uh, less formal language. Yes, this is from, she's from Kudat, Tanjung Simpang Mangayau. It's good for you to give them a less formal uh, way to interact on MOOC. For example, Jumain is from FEB, but uh, be aware that, see this type of response. I think Jumain came from Zimbabwe, if I'm not mistaken, right? So they start to to have a less less serious uh, a comment among themselves. I mean, I leave it to them. Okay. Once they feel happy on my MOOC, then they start to do the learning activities. One is uh, defining. Yeah, I skip the videos. This is the list of uh, activities by progress. Okay, let's focus on defining crossword. Okay, Dr. Terry, crossword is good for for you to use. You don't have to use external uh, content from my widget. Just use a crossword here. On my widget, there's crossword. On uh, open learning, there's also crossword. So better you use it here. You don't have to embed it. DG Kura, digital curation of material element. I guarantee that we have done uh, something like this, maybe related to this in your classroom, face to face instruction. But on MOOC, you just uh, maybe change it a bit. For example, snap a photo 
of a poster or a notice uh, notice board, for example, uploaded here, briefly explain the graphic element in the poster, suggest, see, so many verbs here, snapping, uploading, explaining, uh, suggesting how to improve. For face-to-face -face interaction, just to explain for the student about uh, the quality of good graphic design, maybe take at least three hours or one semester, but maybe they come up with one simple activity like this. Then they, can, they could explain it, readability of the text, unclear, talking about readability. And if you happen to use your own MOOC in your classroom, which is good, you can call Adiba's name next week, Adiba. Uh, I know you mentioned about readability. Uh, who sits next to Adiba? Ali, for example. Ali, could you please explain or guess what is uh, mentioned, what is mentioned by Adiba about readability? What do you think about readability? So Ali will start to, just start gelabah lah, start nak Google cari bahan sebagainya. Padahal Ali could ask Adiba, please explain me. So this is active, active participation, face to face. Of course not now, until maybe end of the year. But here, you may also uh, reply and ask for further explanation. You please uh, give me an example first. An example, for example. Okay. So it's not only a passive uh, one-way activity of uploading videos. It's also need book uh, needs you to actively communicate with the student. I know it's challenging. I have 4,000 4, students. I could not reply to each and every command. Uh, one simple approach is to give it as a group task. All right. Any questions? Anything? Uh, Shazrina, did you conduct any needs analysis on future more content as demand? I've, I haven't. So maybe we could discuss further and publish a paper about the result of the needs of the needs analysis. This is good, uh, good topic. Thank you very much, Dr. Shazina, for your suggestion, for your question. Of course, it's very important. Kalau uh, tidak, what I'm showing to you today, dia jadi shock sendiri. Saya shock sendiri kan buat macam-macam activity, padahal. It doesn't fit what my student needs. Uh, if you, your class started in February 20, did you accept late comma? Yes. On MOOC, yes. No worries. If your class started in February 2020, uh, it's self-paced. Self-paced means you can do it one go, one day, complete everything, up to you. Of course, if you are not following this semester system here, that means you would expect delay or no response from me. If you follow week one, week two, until week 14 for each semesters, I uh, maybe not guarantee, but at least I can uh, respond to your answers on the activities, on your submission. Okay. Thank you, uh, Faisal. Yes, I accept. You may join my class. I mean, your students may join my students anytime every semester. Uh, it happened many times. For example, now we are on semester two, in this semester two, but your, let's say your student from your faculty want to join my course, he or she click this one, semester one. So what will happen, he would spend, he would see the same thing, he would spend one semester doing all activities, but alone not with my current students. So it's very important. Of course, the default page is uh, the current page. Uh, and the question, have you give any badge, badges? Uh, at the moment, no badges, but I give them the certificate. The certificate with my signature. I just click issue certificates for those who completed the content. Completed the task. Okay. 
here you can pick any of your students if they reach a 100% completion rate and you may give them the PDF of your of your certificate. You may design it using the template on Open Learning. You may upload your signature. That's if you can't meet your student, like a distant student from, from the rest of the world. But for my own student, I will announce the name in the classroom and invite them to be present on the stage. I print it nicely and give the PDF version of it in front of the rest of those who uh, did not complete it 100%, maybe during week 10 or week 11. Suddenly, the following weeks, uh, semua berbut, complete, not dapatkan sijil. So maybe that's a way of doing gamification uh, in the real real example on the stage in the classroom. Thank you, Lagi Soalan. How do you plan the content and all the things that are suitable for the time frame? All right. Challenging question, how do you plan? Right, my history is simple. First is on PowerPoints before book. Uh, PowerPoint slides, weekly PowerPoint slides. Then it has become open courseware. Open courseware is like MOOC, but it's a passive one. I just upload everything, that's it, bye-bye. Then from the content, it has evolved into uh, MOOC, open learning on open learning platform. So in terms of uh, planning the content for the time frame, all right. So let's say I have three credit hours face-to-face -face every week. Uh, maybe two hours face-to-face, -face, the remaining one hour for them to do online activity. So I don't have three hours lecture straight, which would uh, bore them to death if I give long lecture for three hours. So I leave one hour for them to submit activity for week one, for example. Okay, thank you for the question. Yes, it's very important. Uh, it's a 120 credit, 120 hour per semester for this course. I should make sure that the burden is not uh, too much because they have other subjects as well. So that, that's why I would suggest quick, short activity more than 30 minutes per week time frame is it correct Dr. Feza, am i answering you about the time frame yes it should be less than less than one hour one is the about completion number two nanti student complain pula kan banyak sangat activity dalam activity dalam ada project big project 30 warga Assignment 1, 15 marka. Assignment 2, 15 marka. MOOC lagi. Dalam MOOC ada weekly activity. Penat dah buat uh, ungraded activity. Tak dapat marka kesian student kan. Yes, less than one hour. You may have big, uh, for, at the moment for my subject, yes, it's graded. You may decide if it's graded, you need to explain it in the my mark, in my, on my mark uh, website platform. It's easy for me. I have uh, less than 60 students per semester. I can check there. Of course, number one, I see the completion rate. Number two, I have to read the submission. That's why a simple short submission is enough. I limit the discussion. For example, I limit the explanation. For example, explain the issue in 50 words enough or make it less than 100 words credit transfer applicable via MOOC uh, I've been discussing this many years ago with uh, MEPTA Majlis e-learning coordinators kebangsaan and now yes you may the recent email I received you may ask Dr. Terry about this uh, yes for credit transfer it's about Apple Apple C it's for even for outsiders, not only for our own students. Uh, interesting story about my course, for example, uh, in semester one, uh, one Unima student never see me before, but suddenly I meet him or her face to face, semester two. And I ask him, 
what, what makes you taking my face-to-face -face class? He said, uh, I've, I took your open learning course. Oh, that's great. So from open learning, you promote your course. And yes, my course is uh, Russo's uh, booker for the whole university. TMU, the court is uh, you, Omum. Okay, Dr. Terry is answering yes. Akam is producing MOOC for credit transfer. That's great. Okay. The rest of you, while you are listening to my story, uh, I would love if you could enroll and answer. Try to become becoming my students and answer the, my questions. I know you are maybe not interested with this uh, technology, motivated technology, but at least you can join and you can see and you can feel it. I like this uh, sorting function. I show this screen on my uh, during my face to face class. Then I click highest progress. And before the screen appears, I ask my student to everyone drum roll, please. Do, 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 do. Our most active student at the moment is Nor Fitri Azira. Then they start to give a round of claps and I ask uh, Nor Fitri to uh, present on the stage and I, I present the, the certificate. It's a great experience to link. Uh, MOOC with face-to-face -face interaction. Okay, this is the certificate for not zero. She can upload it, uh, download it herself. If you want to go for extra miles, you can print it in color, uh, laminate it whatsoever, and with your signature here. Right. Any other questions from Dr. Maya? Will there be a special webinar for that? Okay, you may ask Dr. Terry about uh, credit transfer MOOC. Please, Dr. Terry, assist them. I would be happy. I was discussing about MOOC credit transfer for the last two, three years ago, and I'm very happy it would happen this year. For credit transfer, at the moment, this is what I could share, but not for the credit transfer content yet. Okay. No worries, there will be another session about that. Okay, Dr. Maya, maybe you can share about your project. I would like to see your course, then I can suggest in terms of activity. Boleh, please, anyone, you may share your screen. Boleh ke, Dr. Terry? Do you allow them to share the screen? So if you not share the more. So see, I could advise any, anything that if they are interested to know better, so I listen to my suggestions, anyone? If the student says they are not learning new things, that they are not learning any theoretical uh, content, then I would argue that they learn here not to understand the theory, but by experiential learning. They learn by experiencing. For example, first, go to fontsquarrel.com. Second, pick one font. Third, download it. Install it. It's not easy. Lots of steps. Of course, it's very straightforward. Just double click and it will be installed on your C drive. Type your name and also the name for the phone using Microsoft Word or any software. Upload it here. Tell us why. So don't forget that maybe higher level of uh, thinking. We call it blown taxonomy. Tell why. The rest is more related to uh, step by step, simple step. Okay. Adiba says, I love Gabrielisa phone. Yes, I love this phone, but not only love it, but also 
attractive, luxurious feel. See, I haven't discussed with Adiba about font personality. Every font that we use, it has its their own its own personality, smooth, stylish, unique. But she has answered. She seems to has to have covered the theory parts. That's it. I'm very happy, Adiba. You don't have to uh, read one fifty pages books about uh, font selection or font choice. Of course, I should guide her later on here on book or on face to face discussion. Adelina kata mail shake because it's cute. Okay, like cute mail shake one. Simple and can use for any work. Open sans. So, different uh, interpretation of simplicity from a student. Maybe kita kata open sun is too simple. But Timothy may argue here. Kita boleh Timothy says, how simple is simple? Yes. Okay, I have class weekly, tapi saya discuss with them maybe every two weeks. Kalau every week nanti satu, uh, mengganggu my syllabus, of course, content banyak kan. Number two, uh, dentist student bosan pula setiap minggu check mook setiap minggu check mook dah siap ke belum siap ke belum i think every two weeks should be okay bukan nak semak siapa dah buat siapa belum buat tapi at least to uh, rediscuss submission in the classroom so kita integrate lah face to face dengan mook content boleh tuan tapi uh, in reality <laughs> The discussion ni dalam WhatsApp dia akan student akan copy paste dia punya uh, this progress dia akan tanya pukul 10 malam <laughs> that's in reality so kita terus komen lah so, your answer is maybe too too simple please explain more so beyond MOOC dah nampak ni beyond MOOC beyond face to face uh, classroom uh, discussion okay lagi uh, just example I can edit my page for example, I can post text, post file here, or I may ask for interactive from from my students. Using checklist. For example, using random selector, kita boleh a student to you can set the the parameter, the content here, the title. I'm not going to explain this in detail. Maybe just uh, give it a try, and you can set the text. Banyak lagi di sebelah kiri ni, quiz, multiple choice. If you are familiar with uh, Elip, I think the same, not the same steps, but basically the same process, the same way for you to fill in the blanks, uh, categorizing, yeah, see, the crossword is here, so you don't have to use crossword from book widgets, widget. If you want to use it from external widgets, you may do so, uh, but of course you need to know the correct uh, iframe link and paste it nicely to embed it or at least link give the url of the the content to, to open learning page okay lagi soalan uh, biggest challenges on doing work uh, the biggest challenge is to complete it. Tadi saya kata, saya kata tak perlu perfect kan, yang penting complete. Tapi sebenarnya, to complete is is also a challenge. Last time, uh, it was compulsory to have, I can't remember, number of, there's a certain number of uh, videos. That's why I have 57 videos. To record it myself. I've recorded it myself in my office. And of course, I leave it to come. 
to edit the video, the intro video. The rest are edited is myself. Okay, to challenge lah. Uh, but for your case, I don't think you should focus on the quantity of the videos. Rather, you should focus on the quality of the interaction. So that's why I suggest you to study how open learning, uh, sorry, future learn did it. See the, the way they, they reframe the questions, the way they come up with the discussion forum and bring it into your class, in your own uh, home. Yeah, Dr. Terry asked me, how do you grade from open learning platform? platform? At the moment, I'm not using the automatic grading uh, function. I only use number one completion rate. That's great enough. But with another, let's say, 10% for MOOC, 5% uh, for completion, 100% mean five marks guaranteed. Another remaining 5%, I have to read the submission, not one by one, maybe at least randomly, and see how they answered. Macam marka bonus atau limo marka. Small number of students, yes, but if we have 4,000 students, it's not easy to read one by one and to grade one by one to give marks. Here, example, uh, using multiple choice. What is... And example of multimedia products. You may say here whether you allow only one answer or allow multiple answers. Again, it depends on whether what's your intention. If you want to give students uh, more chance, you may allow multiple answers. Answer one. No point presentation. You may add images here. Uh, the rest of the answer is incorrect. Uh, what's what's the example? Okay. You may add more answers. Normally for MCQ, we have four answers. Again, for creating MCQs, uh, it's not straightforward. If you want it to be more challenging and more higher level, you may come up with a synthesized type of questions multiple selection for example okay. it's maybe you need different different uh, session for that one with the experts from our university what how to create mcq high quality mcq yeah like this Alan. is there any certain percentage to pass your MOOC course no uh, for certification of course 100 uh, percent once they get 100 uh, percent submission, achievement, then they'll get the certificate. But for the face-to-face -face classroom, uh, it's not compulsory to, to get 100% percentage okay, to pass my subject. All right, so I leave it to you to play around with these uh, functionalities, integration, advanced, uh, gallery, code snippet, can even link it with a tutor, a Twitter, sorry. Okay, so Alan, anyone, uh, you may turn on or, or your audio if you don't want to type it here. Assalamualaikum, Syarul. Yes, Saya nak tanya, um, before pandemic and after pandemic, what's okay. your biggest difference in your life as educator? Thank you. Oh, nice question. <laughs> before pandemic, I was in the office five to eight to five. During pandemic, I'm at home from uh, eight a.m. to eight a.m. And for the last three months, I've got three journal papers accepted, one paper per month. 
uh, that's of course because of the because of the lockdown now about teaching uh, uh, for MOOC, I have been using it for the last five years with earlier than the pandemic I see that this is the way forward and it's here now today uh, my students before this they said uh, they took it lightly maybe not interested to get the certificate but during MOOC, uh, during a pandemic sorry I can easily see that the percentage of completion is 100% for almost 60-70% of the student now. Okay. That's related to MOOC. And I've started to create my own, if you ask me, my own YouTube channel. Of course, I'm not, uh, I have no intention to become a YouTuber. Uh, one minute. And I uploaded my teaching video. I'm teaching a visualization this semester. See how I link visualization subject with current situation. COVID-19 visualization, how to follow Malaysian, Malaysia coronavirus live updates. One week ago. Please ignore the number of views. Sebab uh, tak popular kan, bukan YouTuber. Yes. Uh, another subject, ask them to come up with a paper. <clears throat> so maybe the blessings because of the pandemic, I never have my own YouTube videos. Suddenly I have a new channel. How I did this, uh, my approach is killing two birds using only one stone. This is during the, the lecture time. So I recorded my video and edit it nicely with the intro here. Yeah, that's why that's why tiba -tiba abstract. Sepatutnya, hi, welcome to my channel. Kan? Uh, I skipped that part. Right, so short videos, I edited it. And I give this link to my student and I ask them to follow the instruction come up with their uh, paper for the report. Bolehkah Dr. Terry tumpang promote my my YouTube channel? Eh? Yeah. Uh, maybe not related to your subject, but for example, uh, cara hasilkan video sepantas kilat dengan Lumen 5. Okay, this one. This is a live, live feed, live video. So I just record it. I record it from Webex. And from Webex, I exported it and edit it using uh, using one minute is Premiere Rush. Adobe Premiere Rush. Uh, each of us, we have this tool. It's on Google Cloud. Uh, sorry, not Google Cloud. It's on uh, what's it? Adobe Adobe Creative Cloud. You can install it. It's a simple video editing tool. I love it. Since all of us, we have the, that uh, account with Adobe, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, and this is Adobe Premiere Rush 1.5. And upload it to my channel on YouTube. Tak banyak view lah, baru 100 lebih. Tapi for the student, thank you sir untuk tutorialnya. Tutorialnya. They would uh, think that this is very, very simple, very good. A uh, way to come up with a video like using Lumen 5. Okay, lagi soalan. Uh, Terry tanya, is it best to use MCQ for MOOC course? Yes, I think MCQ is the best. If you think MCQ is uh, only for low level Bloom's taxonomy, you may think twice. MCQ is not, <laughs> it's not easy to create the question and student this easy one for the student is just to tembak the answer lah. But for us to come up with a good, good stem, good selection, good distractor, bukan yang senang lah. Okay. So jangan tanya straight question. Uh, yang manakah berikut bukan? Antara empat ini yang manakah tidak? So that's very, I uh, can try to go for the another types of uh, asking. Congratulations, thank you very much. Natasha Zina. Can I embed the video in the ELIP course page? Yes. You can embed YouTube videos, bring it to Elip, bring to MOOC. Okay. 
Okay. I may embed the code here. Okay. Or you can set which second your video to start. Copy it and paste it on even on Padlet, on Elip, or even on YouTube. Sorry, on uh, MOOC. Okay. Lagi soalan, can you share the challenges of producing video or video? <laughs> Ada lima puluh tujuh video. Challengenya pertama writing the script. Writing the script, of course, uh, the English must be, of course, English is not mother tongue, mother tongue. Tapi at least betul lah jangan nampak sangat broken. Satu so, writing the script. Number two, if you can't remember the script, the only way is to read the script while shooting. Now, if you read it by reading like this, uh, reading the text word by word, then the video would not. Uh, seems natural. So one solution for me, I use uh, the my use my own smartphone, put it just next to the camera, and read the script, the transcript from my phone. There's lots of uh, transcript apps on 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 Android. Okay, number one. Number two, shooting. Of course, shooting. How are we done by by Calm, by Fitz, and the rest? The content video, the teaching video, is done by myself. Shooting, then uh, editing, editing by myself, then uploading. I uh, leave it to come to upload it to to, to MOOC. If you search for multimedia technology MOOC here on on YouTube, uh, you can find it here. It's the trailer, but you may find it from Minimus MOOC playlist. And my video was among the earliest. Of course, it was 2015. Okay. So here, uh, challenge shooting challenge is not easy. Satu shooting di di tengah di tepi tasik Unimas. Okay. Then uh, my click. Satu shooting. Uh, Kedua, while you're shooting, macam-macam distraction, ada kereta lalu, ada tukang potong rumput, tukang potong rumput kat belakang tu. Okay. So many challenges lah. I think uh, full swing, satu bulan boleh siap. You can come up with the video. Full swing lah. Kalau tak, maybe at least six months or one year boleh get a nice video. Number one. Number two, back to the office. Editing. Apa lagi? Banyak sangat lah kalau ada in terms of the challenges. The video is five minutes. But the setup maybe at least at least half an hour. Pertama nak kena make sure the script is okay in front of you if you want to read the script. Otherwise, if you want to be uh, spontaneous, make sure it's correct. Of course, before that, nak kena susun buku dekat belakang. This is in my office. Nicely. Kalau tak small, uh, Mistake will be glaring, will be clear. Of course, for those who are really particular. Even tajuk buku belakang ni pun dia akan baca. Ni pensyarah ICT ke apa ni? Kenapa tajuk buku pasal social science? Ah, macam tu. Okay, very particular. Okay, editing. Now you need to find the nice uh, clip, image clip. Place it nicely. Then you make sure it should be synchronous. Okay, bila, you sebut, bila saya sebut video format, the text must appear immediately. Any delays, uh, that, that make it takes time. You can uh, fix it nicely for the on the time frame on the uh, video editing time frame. Okay, Dr. Teddy says now is a good time for you to do the shooting. Uh, last time I did the shooting during weekend, two weekends I think, Saturday Sunday. Pergi pergi dekat faculty. The best way, if you want, you may shoot in the studio. We have nice MOOC studio. Uh, but the backdrop, background, you may use overlay background or superimpose it. Uh, tapi tak, tak nampak cantik macam susunan buku office sign ni lah. Uh, nampak cantik kan? All the books nicely. If, look, if you think it's nice, wait till you see bawah meja ni. <laughs> bawah meja ni memang berterabur lah sebab kamera tak nampak, no worries. Okay, so that says maybe uh, MOOC Studio has screen screen. You can overlay very nice background, overseas punya background pun boleh. So I leave it to you to digest 
uh, my content. You may copy even my text the way I, of course, change it, uh, replace it with your context and see what happened to you. So maybe my suggestion only fits my own student because this is about technology course. Then you will see. Never mind, next semester you will uh, drop the question, change different uh, to different question. Okay, lagi. Kalau tak ada, I return it to Dr. Terry. 